All screen, all the time. That was basically the philosophy behind the Xiaomi Mi Mix. But now, Xiaomi finds itself in a marketplace that might be a little bit oversaturated with small bezel designed phones that they kind of pioneered with their original device. But now we have the Softmart attempt and we're here to review it because it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on everybody? And this is our full review of the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2. Now, one of the first things that you will notice about this device is the screen, and for good reason. You still get a very high screen to body ratio on the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2, and it's still one of the most pleasing devices to look at, just like the original one was. But once you look at what's around that display, you find that quite a few things have actually changed, oh, mainly the size. You have a 5.99 inch screen on here, which makes the entire device that much smaller. The curves that have been added to the Mi Mix 2 might make the phone feel a little bit too familiar compared to other phones that have minimal bezels. And we're going to harp on the grip of the device because the ceramic returns on the backing and it's still one of the best materials that we have ever felt on any smartphone. And Xiaomi is the main company that still uses it on their devices. On that backing is the same fingerprint reader in a good spot and under it the Mi branding that keeps everything looking pretty minimal. However, the same compromise that helped this become a reality on the original Mi Mix returns again and it's that large chin on the bottom. That also includes the front facing camera in probably one of the worst positions that we've used in any smartphone. Not only is it easy to cover up the camera with one's right hand, it makes for an odd angle that selfie experts will not be too happy with. Sure, the camera app tells the user to turn the phone around when it comes to taking a more conventional selfie, but that's not something that you can do in apps like Instagram and Snapchat. But the vibration speaker that we didn't really like in the original Mi Mix for the phone calls has been replaced with an actual phone speaker. It's a small driver that points upward and it actually sounds so much better than last year's alternative. So thus, this phone addresses a couple of issues that made the original one a little bit less accessible. However, if you ask me, this already pretty phone would have been made better if we could get our hands on the Special Edition. The Special Edition of the Mi Mix 2 comes with a ceramic unibody so that it doesn't have to cut the material to make room for a metal frame. It's all ceramic wrapped around that beautiful screen. And then there's actually a version that is completely white, which makes it one of the more unique devices that we've looked at in recent memory. Xiaomi claimed that this white version is a lot like a perfect piece of jade, and this is definitely the addition of the Mi Mix 2 that I would rock because of its crazy good looks. The size of the display makes it pretty good to handle, though getting up and down the phone with hand gymnastics will still be part of the experience. And brightness is pretty much where it should be for an IPS display when out in broad daylight. You can change the color profile in the settings, and there is a reading mode to sort of make things a little bit easier on your eyes, especially during the nighttime. Honestly, the only misstep when it comes to the screen here on the Mix 2 is that it is still Full HD Plus resolution. It would have been great to see Quad HD on here because what we're looking at here is supposed to be one of Xiaomi's main flagships. But keeping up with the flagship game is not tough when you look at the internals. The Snapdragon 835 is accompanied with overachieving bits like 6 to 8 gigabytes of RAM that come in at different price points. Storage is also not a problem for a phone that doesn't have a micro SD card slot as 64, 128, or 256 gigabytes of internal storage are available. So I really had no problem with everyday performance on the Mix 2, zipping between applications despite the actual software itself being a little rough around the edges. As this is a global ready phone, Google Play services were pre-installed on this device so I could use it to its fullest extent here in the US. More radios are in this phone than any other device in Android thus far, which makes this a phone that you can use pretty much anywhere across the globe. So when I used the phone on my T-Mobile account, I had no problems with calls and call quality on that GSM network. Sound in other situations is a bit of a mixed bag, unfortunately. Without a headphone jack, users are forced to use a USB Type-C adapter to use wired headphones with the Mix 2. But thankfully, I do have my own solutions for that with a truly wireless set of earbuds. But that wasn't really quite as upsetting as the external speaker. Outside, in noisy environments, this just didn't get loud enough. And then if I lowered the volume to around 50% or below, it felt like there was a noise gate there, so that lower ends of the audio were kind of getting cut off, and it made for a really odd listening experience. Now, one real bright spot to the original Mi Mix was the battery life. Maybe it's because of the full HD Plus resolution in the screen, and also because of the upgraded internals, but this 3400 milliamp hour unit was able to get me to five hours of screen on time without any issues, and that was a pretty consistent metric. And that screen on time was throughout the course of a 12 to 16 hour workday most of those days. And of course you can charge the phone with Quick Charge 3.0, but it wasn't something I felt like I had to do, at least in the middle of my days. 
So that brings us to the camera experience, which unfortunately Xiaomi kind of took the more conventional route when you see them kind of doing more experimental things with their other flagships. Well, this doesn't really take into account the front-facing camera, which is itself unconventional, and like I said before, just simply odd. I do a lot of video calls these days, and that was when I found the camera positioning to be far less than ideal. On a number of different occasions, I was told that I was basically looking away from them because the camera is down here, and I was looking above at their face on the screen. So it was a little bit distracting, they admitted, but also if I tried to look at the camera itself, it also felt a little bit odd, and most of the time, if I'm holding the phone in a regular way, I got a weird upward angle. And I kind of think that Xiaomi knows that the positioning of the camera, while unavoidable, is kind of weird because they even made the camera optic black enough to blend in with the rest of the device. Now the rear camera is a 12 megapixel shooter that boasts 4 axis optical image stabilization and not too much else. While the stabilization does help with some of the 4K video recording that I did, and it helped a little bit in low light shooting, it's about the only thing that is special about this camera. That said, the app does have quite a few different modes, and I found myself using the manual mode a little bit more often to try to get some stylized shots. For example, I wanted to get some light trails in these photos, so I slowed the shutter speed down. So pictures in general are pretty good, though it's no surprise that it kind of falls apart in low light. The HDR capture is another pet peeve of mine because it is a toggle rather than an auto mode. But it does do a decent job of getting better exposure and adding a little bit of color to scenes, even if it does make the shutter to file speeds a lot slower. The main story here is that the camera did nothing to really blow me away. Some pictures and videos came out really well, but the same amount of them kind of came out a bit subpar. I'm inclined to say that the camera is average then, especially since Xiaomi is trying harder with their other phones that have dual cameras. And finally, we make it over to the software and the MIUI, which is rocking Android Nougat as its base. Now, if you have used the MIUI at all before, then you know that it doesn't have an app drawer, and a lot of users kind of find that a little bit hard to get used to. But if you have used the MIUI before, not a whole lot has changed. That said, there are quite a few features that the MIUI can boast, like the Quick Ball. It's a small, convenient way of getting to the core functions of the phone without relying on the soft keys. There's also the Dual app, which allows for multiple instances of the same application, and you can take that even further by putting an entirely different second space on the phone for an entirely different experience on top of the one you already set up. Now the main issues that I have with the software are ones that I've seen before, just like the features I just mentioned. And mainly, the biggest issue I have with the MIUI is that it requires a little bit more polish. Parts of the OS don't seem to be completely finished or properly translated from Chinese, and the notifications in particular are a bit off. Overall, the MIUI has come a long way and continues to be supported by the user forum community, meaning that updates can come quickly. But after one, maybe two generations of flagships from Xiaomi, I'm a little bit miffed to see that the MIUI hasn't drastically changed, which makes me think it's just simply not ready for prime time in the West if you are going to get your hands on this device. And so there you have it, the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2. While I'm still excited to be able to use a ceramic phone again, and it is another Mi Mix, unfortunately the luster of the original device has kind of worn off by now. If you really want it to stand out from the crowd, maybe the best way to do it is to spring for the special edition of the phone, which will come in at around $720 US when converted from Chinese currency. Now consider that for a second, that the special edition white ceramic one is $720 US. The 6GB of RAM and 128GB internal storage version is almost $600, making it over $300 less than plenty of the flagships we're seeing now that get close to $1,000 in price. So Xiaomi still does have that feather in its cap, the fact that its phones are still about as affordable as they possibly can be. So depending on your stance regarding the lower resolution display, the single camera, and the Chinese software experience, this might be one hell of a steal. And thus we wouldn't blame you if you wanted to go back to the phone that got us all wanting all screen all the time. You simply just have to find a way to get your hands on one. Let us know what you think of the Mi Mix 2, and don't forget to drop some likes on this video and to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so you can keep up with all of the great releases that we're seeing at the end of 2017, and you can follow us for that and even more because we are your source for all things Android.